Good morning and welcome to this short act of worship on this Sunday the 15th of November 2020. I only say the day and date to remind us of this as it is so easy to lose track of time in the current climate. My name is Hazel Monroe and I am one of the worship leaders at Westburn Parish Church in Greenock. Thank you for joining me today and sharing in this time of fellowship. It is maybe a strange thing to call it fellowship when we are all in different places, but hopefully by being together in company with one another, we can share a form of fellowship as we worship together. The theme of this morning's worship is faith and hope. It was inspired for me by the prayer of St Francis, which I had been reading. Let me share a part of it with you, in case the words are not familiar to you. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Although the text is known as the prayer of St Francis and is often associated with St Francis of Assisi, there is some doubt as to whether he wrote the words or not. it. No matter, it is a prayer that is often used and fits nicely with my thoughts this morning. Let us first come before God in a prayer of approach and thanksgiving. Let us pray. God of transition and change, you have led your people on challenging journeys. Stir in us the need to have you with us on our challenging journey of life at this time. God of transition and change, you have asked your people to look and question. Stir in us the need to question, so that we do not become complacent and so take you and your world for granted. God of transition and change, meet with us now through our worship. Be with us as we take time out from our busy lives to listen to your word and to challenge our thinking. Stir in us a renewed understanding and a deepening of our faith. God, we thank you that you always listen, even when our voices are less than joyful. We thank you that you still wait for us, even when we dawdle or drag our feet. We thank you that your generosity always overflows, even when we are grudging of its bounty to others. We thank you that you are always and completely yourself and that your love is never limited by our smallness. Lord God, as a community of your people, we continue to pray in the words that Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thomas was well known as the disciple of Jesus who had doubts. But I'm sure that he was not the only one of them who did. He was probably the one who spoke out first and said what some of the others were thinking. We too have doubts at times, and I think that if we learn nothing else from Thomas and the time he spent with Jesus, we learn that it is not wrong to have doubts. For it's often in the questioning of these doubts that we can reach a deeper understanding of our own faith. For help to do this, let us turn to the Bible. Our reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. 
This letter was written by Paul to prepare the way for a visit that he planned to make to the church at Rome. His plan was to work among the Christians there for a short while, and then, with their support, he hoped to move on to work in Spain. He wrote to explain his understanding of the Christian faith and its practical implications for the lives of the Christians in Rome. We read then at chapter 1 from verse 16, a passage entitled, The Power of the Gospel. I have complete confidence in the gospel. It is God's power to save all who believe, first the Jews and also the Gentiles. For the gospel reveals how God puts people right with himself. It is through faith from beginning to end. As the scripture says, the person who is put right with God through faith shall live. Amen. I said at the start that my theme was faith and hope. So what is hope and what is faith? Hope is defined as an optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation or desire. While faith is a belief not based on proof. Faith says it is now and hope says in the future it could happen. In Hebrews at chapter 11 verse 1, we are given a biblical definition of what faith is. It says, To have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for, to be certain of the things we cannot see. And then at verse 2 we are told that it was by their faith that people of ancient times won God's approval. The remainder of chapter 11 gives a list of the many people in the Old Testament who had faith and how this was demonstrated. Abel, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, the list goes on and on. But let us not spend any more time in the past, but rather let us jump forward to present day and consider our own faith. Would we win God's approval for our faith in these difficult days of 2020? Or would we be found wanting, hoping that things will turn out okay, but not really sure? Different people have their faith stirred by different things. Sometimes it is people and their actions that inspire us. Other times we can be moved by creation or nature. Or for some people it can be words or music or both together. One of the things that I miss the most in our worship is the singing, as hymns can often stir something in my heart. The words of hymns are very important and I guess that we could all come up with a list of hymns that move us in one way or another. Linking back to last week's thoughts about remembrance, back in 1939, as the war clouds darkened over Europe, King George VI lifted countless spirits through a Christmas message broadcast to the British Empire. In it he quoted these lines from a poem by Minnie Louise Haskins. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread into the unknown. And he replied, Go into the darkness and put your hand in the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. Any person, any group, any congregation, any church, any country has times of facing the unknown. None of us is exempt, and all of us are currently being challenged in 2020. 
as children of faith, there is never a better time than now for us to put our hand firmly into the hand of God. That shall be to us better than light and safer than a known way. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your hope arises with each dawn, pushing back the rubble of our lives. Each new day reminds us of your grace. You paint hope across our skies. Into the deafening cry of hopelessness, you whisper love. Love that catches us. Love that holds us. You reach into our dark world with hope, truth and light. Stretch out your strong hand to hold and rescue those who have suffered and those who are continuing to suffer. You know that this year has been really difficult for people everywhere. Nowhere has been left untouched by this pandemic and no one has been left unaffected by the havoc that it has caused. In our prayers today, we especially pray for those who are known to us, who face the difficulties that life throws at us all at different times. Suffering, illness, heartache, bereavement. Assure them of our love and support and give them the strength to deal with whatever they have to face. Let your almighty love move mountains, cross seas and breathe life and light into the darkest places of your world. Light that redeems, light that restores, light that heals, light that protects light that saves. There is nothing higher, stronger or greater than your love. Through it we trust in you, so we know that there is no end, just new beginnings, no finish, just new starts. Lead us in your way, wherever you want us to go. In your name. We ask all this. Amen. I want to finish off our time together with a piece that I found. For me, it sums up 2020 and where we are. As we come towards the end of a year that most of us would rather forget. It is called Hope in the Darkness. 2020 has been tough. We've seen better days and long for them once again. People are hurting, scared, mad, or generally just exhausted from it all, ready to move on. But there is hope. As Christians, we are called to share that hope. The Saviour of the world, Jesus Christ. No matter how dark it seems, we need to walk as children of light. The world needs us to shine because the world needs Jesus now more than ever. So let us go out into the world as children of light, ready and prepared to shine in your world. And may the blessing of God Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all, today, tomorrow and forever. Amen.